Hello, my babies. It's me. Life cycle of a lake. Amazing. Look at this. Canoes. It's going to be awesome. Love you. Bye. Before we get specific about what's going on with lakes, let's talk about what's in a lake, which is water, in case you forgot. Water freezes at zero, in case you forgot. I think you probably know that it snows here in Minnesota if you didn't get that message. So at zero, it turns from ice to snow or from water to ice. Excuse me, I don't even know what I'm talking about. And 32 degrees Fahrenheit. But water is really weird in terms of density. If you have metal, for instance, if you cool the metal, it will become more dense. The colder it becomes, the denser it becomes. Or if you warm it, the less dense, or it will expand. Water is different than that. Um, water is densest at four degrees Celsius or 39 degrees Fahrenheit, which means that if you heat water up above four degrees, so five, six, seven, and anything higher than that, it will become less dense and expand. And also, if you go below 4 degrees C, so into the freezing re ranges, it will become less dense and expand. And this is why ice cubes expand when you put them in the freezer. So now what we're going to talk about is what happens to the lake in one year's time. What happens during summer, fall, winter, and spring. And basically they go through like an annual cycle like almost anything in during those seasons. And basically what you're going to find is the lake will either be doing one of two things. It will either be stratifying, which means stratification means that there will be layers. So what are the layers that you will see in the lake? You don't actually see it, but there will be layers of water filtering out according to temperature. So some seasons will be stratified and some seasons will be mixing. So there will be no layers of um, water according to temperature and they will all be mixing together. All right, so now onto the big question. What happens to the lake in one year's time? I know you've been dying to know and I'm glad to tell you. So let's start with the best little season right here, which is summer, because you know why you're not in school in summer. And we're outside, and there's a sun, and we're frolicking, and all the sunshiny rays are going to the lake, and it's making it warm and delicious, and we swim, and it's fun. And the reason why the sun is so fabulous is because it heats up the water. So look, if we look at the water right here, it's 22 degrees C. It's going to be warm because the top layer of the lakes receive all the sunlight, and so they get warmer and hot, hotter. Um, we also know that the densest water is 4 degrees Celsius. So notice that at the very bottom of the lake right here is the 4 degree C water. It will always be at the bottom of the lake because it's the densest form of water. So notice that the densest is here, and then it's definitely warmer up above. So what we find is that the temperatures get warmer as you go from the bottom up. And they actually, the water kind of layers out in different bands of temperature. And so at the top, we've got our bands of warm temperature. And this is the top of the lake. It's called the epilimnion, which is like this fancy word for like the top of the lake because we have to have a fancy word for that. Epi meaning the upper and limnio meaning lake or fresh water. And at the bottom is hypolimnion, which is the bottom portion. or, And it's kind of cut off. Um, it has less amounts of light, sunshine. And uh, as a result, less amount of bi biological activity and sometimes may even get a dead zone occasionally. But this is what's going on in the summer. So what we have is layering. And here in the summer, we've got stratification. All right, so layering of water according to temperature. Then when we get to the fall, here we go, we've got a little sunshine, la 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 la, oh, goodbye, no more sunshine, all right, the, well, the sun's not going away completely, but it's getting less and less, it's not as hot, and notice that the temperature starts to go down in the fall, and what happens is eventually the temperature at the top of the lake is going to hit 4 degrees C around October, November, and that's the same temperature as what it was in the bottom of the lake, so since they're all the same temperature, the water's not forming different bands or layers of temperature, which means that water that was hanging on the bottom all summer can now move to the top and water that was hanging out the top all summer can move to the bottom. We call this mixing or turnover. And this is kind of a good thing because all of the oxygen in the system is getting redistributed. All of the nutrients in the lake is getting redistributed because the water cycling around. It could be bad if you've got pollutants in there. If the pollutants are in the bottom of the lake, they might get um, mixed up again, but generally it's good to give that lake a little fresh bath, all right, and that's kind of what it's doing to itself. It's turning itself over. Then in the wintertime, there's really no sun. Uh, well, there's sun, but it is cold. We're talking like minus 20 degrees C sometimes up on the surface, all right? But again, we know that at the bottom of the lake is always going to be the densest form of water, which is 4 degrees C. So 4 degrees C is slightly above freezing. So it's liquid water and it's dense, so it's hanging out here in the hypolimnion. Um, what happens, though, as you go up is it's getting colder. And eventually it gets to a point where 
Um, it's zero or less, and that's called freezing, for those of you who couldn't remember, and then that's when the ice forms. This is why ice forms on the top of the lake and not bottom. Um, and what we have here is, again, stratification. Strat, I'm going to say for that. And this way it's stratifying, but this time the stratified layers are going from colder to the top to warmer in the bottom. And if you think this is warm right here, oh my God, you need a check in the head. So then eventually winter turns to spring in the magical seasons of life. And the sun finally comes out again, starts shining some of its lovely solar, delicious solar energy in there. And what happens is that ice melts, the temperature goes up, eventually hits 4 degrees C, which matches the density of the bottom of the water at the bottom of the lake. And again, what we see again is the water starts moving around from top to bottom and we get turnover again. So this is the cycle of life, the circle of life, or a lake at least, in one year. So that takes care of our little story of the lake over one year, but what about the whole life of the lake? You know, like we get a birthday every year, but we live many years. So lakes live many years, thousands, millions of years. So lakes age just like people. That We kind of have three age groups for them. We've got baby lakes or oligotrophic lakes. We've got middle age, crabby, midlife crisis lakes, which would be mesotrophic. And we've got old, crusty senior citizen lakes, which is eutrophic, all right? So youngest to oldest in that order. And ages, um, the formal name for the aging of a lake is eutrophication. We've used that word before. Eutrophication, we've said, is a bad thing because um, it's a form of pollution in which humans dump fertilizer into the water unnecessarily. And actually, when humans do it, we call it cultural eutrophication. But please know that eutrophication or nutrients getting into the water is a normal thing we expect, even if humans weren't around for nutrients skin to water. And so when you add more nutrients, the lake becomes, quote, older and becomes more nutrified, and it goes through these three stages, which again are oligotrophic, mesotrophic, and eutrophic. All right, so let's start talking about our baby lake. Oligo means low and trophic means food. So that means there's low nutrient levels in this particular lake. And why is that? Because this lake, before it was lake, was just a big old chunk that fell off of a glacier and it landed in the ground and then it melted and it turned into a lake. And so um, that means the water in there is going to be cold. Um, by the way, cold water holds lots of dissolved oxygen, so there's going to be lots of oxygen for things to use, so that's nice if you're a living creature. But generally, there's not um, a ton of biodiversity in these lakes, not because it isn't a great place to be, but just because it's a baby lake, it hasn't... Um, had a lot of nutrients in it. Lots of nutrients usually means lots of plants, so there's low levels of algae and plant growth. And we know that plants and algae actually cause the food chain to start up. So if you don't have a lot of nutrients to grow those bases of the food chain, you're not going to have a ton of biodiversity. But you do have things. Look, you got loons and all sorts of cute things and um, trouts and stuff, things that like cold water, high dissolved oxygen. Um, another thing you'll find is because you don't have a lot of algae or plants growing, that means they're not dying and decomposing and laying muck on the ground. So what you find is you have rocky bottoms or gravel bottoms or sand. And you can see that in the picture right here. Look at that. That is a nice lake. People want to go up and build a cabin on that lake and swim around it and pretend like they're in like an iced tea commercial. The next stage is the mesotrophic lake, and meso means middle, so this is the middle stage, and so we're not even going to talk about it because you'll get the idea of what happens in mesotrophic when we talk about the bookends, oligo and eutrophic, so just skip on over to eutrophic lake, find out what's happening there, and you'll know that meso is somewhere in between those two stages. So we skip mesotrophic to get to the last step because meso is basically in between oligo and eutrophic and eu means high and trophic means sued. So that means this lake's got lots of nutrients. So what that means is as the lake gets older, it picks up more nutrients from the environment and gets nutrient filled. And more nutrients means more plants and more algae and you have more of a base of a food chain so you've got more biodiversity and things are growing in. And if you look at the picture right there it's got all a lot more picture uh, little animals and plants in it than did the loon picture from the oligotrophic uh, lake. Um, it also means that because there's so much more activity there there's warmer water um, and warmer water means less 
uh, oxygen is in the system, uh, which is kind of a bummer because then things might die if you lose all the oxygen. And also what you notice is there's so much plant growth that all of this growth will die. There's decomposition and you get a mucky bottom. So the bottom, this is the lakes where you like swim and you're like, eh, I don't want to touch the bottom. It's so gross. Well, it's not really gross. It's just part of nature. All right. So calm down. But it is decomposed material from the incredibly abundant and productive ecosystem food chain that's already there. So you're not going to see as much rocks and sand. You're going to see more muck in it. And in some cases, it gets really, really, really biologically active and you see big algae blooms or plant growth, etc. This is very eutrophic. This is sad. All right. But this is what happens when you put a bunch of nutrients in there. All right, time to bring this ship into dock. And what we're going to review here is that the lakes start as a LIGO. They go to a mesic, which mesotrophic level, which is a middle level of age, and then eutrophic. And again, age relates to low amounts of nutrients to high amounts of nutrients. So oligotrophic lakes have low levels of nutrition or nutrients in there, and they get higher as it gets older. And when it gets higher, there's more activity which um, with biology. So we have more creatures living in there. We also have more creatures decaying and dying making the bottom more mucky um, and it's also changing the oxygen levels and um, water temperature over time from colder to warmer and then high to low oxygen levels. Humans can impact this as well and how we impact is we just can make this cycle which usually happens over tens of thousands of years. Um, we can make this happen in much less time by adding nutrients in the form of fertilizer ourselves. So I hope you have a great day. You are a wonderful group of people and smile and wink like this weird little thing here that I just drew. Have a great time. Bye-bye. Bye.